Welcome back, Nation, all my hot shots. And for anybody who's new, make sure you take a minute to like and subscribe so that we can get this out to more people. It really does help uh, with the algorithm and, and getting more people to be able to join the discussion. And uh, <clears throat> we're going to have a guest today. We're going to have Western Conference in uh, to talk with us. We're going to go over some uh, kind of just a recap, you know, do a little strategy session here. Um, so we've had some news, right, um, over the last week since we did this last Sunday. Um, wanted to kind of go over some of the highlights from Rookie Minicamp that we didn't get a chance to touch on. Um, there's been some roster moves, player contract stuff. Uh, Max had his deal reworked. Um, there's been some news coming out of OTAs with the quarterback situation. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, stuff's happened around the league. So kind of interested to see what you guys are thinking and and bring you guys in on the conversation. I um, want to say what's up to my boy, Raider Ryan. Salute. Salute to the nation, for sure. Um, so, you know, I wanted to start off the show. I want to wait off. Wait for uh, Western to get in here. He's having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties, but he's getting that, that uh, ironed out right now. But uh, I wanted to start just talking a little bit about uh, the major story, which is the the quarterback battle, um, but not the one you're thinking about, because I think the, the real quarterback battle is for that third spot between Carter Bradley and Anthony Brown Jr. I don't know if you guys have had a chance to take a look at Carter Bradley yet. If you had a chance to even take a look at Anthony Brown, I did do a video on Carter um, to try to help out the nation, get some information. Uh, came out, I think, yesterday. So you guys can take a look at that. But uh, I think it's going to be very interesting, you know, how this actually shakes out. I mean, you know, Carter Bradley has a pretty strong arm, he's accurate but he's going to need to show that he can read defenses and make quicker decisions under pressure. Um, Anthony Brown Jr. is mobile. Uh, he's a playmaker. It's a different dynamic. Um, so the coaching staff is going to have to kind of consider who's going to fit best in Getsy's scheme, who will have the most to offer uh, as far as that's concerned. Um, <clears throat> so... I mean, I think the competition is going to push both of them to elevate their games, which is what you want to see. Um, and I think they can both get to a position where they could be a reliable backup quarterback or even even better. Um, and Carter Bradley, in my scoring system um, that I use for the quarterbacks, um, he scored a 6-8-8, which equates to a player that, you know, uh, could end up being like a Kirk Cousins level uh, quarterback. So um, it'll be interesting to see what comes out of that, uh, that competition. Um, you know, what are the key attributes that the Raiders should prioritize when you're talking about that third string quarterback position, which gets to be uh, like a free roster spot for us. Um, so they're, they're going to be there. Definitely almost 100 percent certain going to carry three quarterbacks. Um, what's the most important thing uh for that third quarterback position, uh, what what are the what are we looking for? Do we want the mobility? Do we want the playmaking that comes from Brown Jr.? Or do we want the potential um, in the future that you get from like a Carter Bradley? So um, that's a question I put to the nation. Um, let's see here. Looks like Western is still working on getting his sale situation handle. So we'll, we'll move forward a little bit here. Another question I had was everybody knows, uh, I'm pretty sure if you haven't heard yet, Max got a $6 million raise. Um, there's no extension, which I thought there would be some sort of extension in there to create more room for the Raiders. But this, uh, this is just a $6 million raise for being a leader, for being, you know, um, the dude that he is, right, and keeping him motivated, um, you know, based on, you know, rewarding what we want to see. So I think this is interesting. You don't see this a lot of times from a team. Um, obviously, they value Max's contributions, um, his leadership, 
Um, but this is a strategy that I think could help the Raiders in the long term uh, retain key talent, attract uh, future free agents. Um, yeah, so, I mean, what do you guys think about the decision to go ahead and give Max a raise without any sort of like salary cap benefit really there for the Raiders, but simply just to say, you know, thank you for doing the right thing um, and how that might affect, uh, you know, our outlook in the future. So I think that's a smart move. I think it's definitely different. I think it says something different about the Raiders, which is very much in line with, you know, Al's tradition of caring about players, taking care of players, um, and putting players first. So, um, really cool. Really cool. Um, we're also still waiting on, uh, Tom Brady's partial purchase, the Raiders. Uh, it looks like there's some delays there. Um, wondering what Raider fans are thinking about that whole situation. Why is it delayed? Um, you know, Brady might attract some, you know, additional attention to the uh, franchise, uh, more marketing opportunities, um, you know, maybe even more fan engagement because of him being around. Um, but there could be added, you know, expectations and pressure that come from having those eyeballs, uh, Brady being added to the team. He's also not an original Raider. Um, so I think the impact is going to depend largely on how the team manages the ownership uh, integration um, within the existing structure. I don't really know how that's going to work out, but um, what are you guys' thoughts on, you know, adding Brady and the team dynamics and how it will how be perceived by fans and, and so on and so forth? I think that's, uh, that's an interesting kind of angle here that I want to talk about. Um, let's see, we got Raider Ryan. He says, I'm just hoping Carter can be smart with the football and high football IQ. So I think that's a high possibility. He's the coach's son. Um, and when you look at the tape, he tends to make some good decisions. The problems come when he is under duress. And what what you'll see him do is kind of overstride on his throws, um, which leads to tip balls and errant passes. Um, so it's a footwork issue, which is always what you want to try to correct um, if you have to correct something. Um, I'm not pro correcting a quarterback's uh, like arm throwing motion. I think you start doing that kind of stuff and it leads to issues. Um, if a quarterback wants to do that on their own, sure. But I think the footwork issue is something that can always be cleaned up. Um, players can get better at footwork and it can really you know help with their ability to you know deal with pocket pressure first off and, and just be more accurate under duress, um, which I think is where he has some growth uh, that needs to happen. Um, he he can do it. You see it once or twice or more than once or twice, but you see it on tape, so you, you know that he can do it. Uh, it's just a question of being consistent with that, and that's that's going to take fundamentals. Uh, like Bruce Wilkerson was saying, the most important thing, right, is just you know work on the technique. Um, so with his feet um, improving, I think that you'll start to see more of his ability to kind of execute with uh, the football IQ that I, I'm pretty sure he has being a coach's son. Just um, just going to take a wild guess. And then, it look, you know, you see it on tape also. So great question. Great question. Or great comment. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm interested to see what happens in that competition between uh, Bradley and uh, Brown Jr. Um, because Anthony Brown Jr. is uh, pretty accurate himself. He's got a pretty strong arm. Um, he's more mobile. He's probably the most mobile uh, quarterback we have, even though he's not like a burner or anything like that. Um, he has the ability to kind of you know, create and that kind of stuff. So um, it'll be interesting to see what happens there, which direction they decide to go, um, you know, based on, you know, what they're looking for in the future of the roster. So um, let's see here. So it looks like, oh, and so I wanted to kind of talk about uh, rookie minicamp. Right. So we didn't really get a chance to go over that too much. Um, Brock Bowers 
looked awesome. Uh, you know, uh, he he came in and he maybe already kind of setting a standard for the rookie class as far as the work ethic. And, um, you know, I think that his transition um, might have a, 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 an uplift even further on you know, the team's morale um, and the performance of this rookie class. Um, not just because of him as a player, but the kind of uh, precedent he sets um, just from reports coming out of any camp. Right? Um, other players that sit out, uh, Dylan Lauby, um, love this kid, versatile, explosive. Um, you know, he had a career in college where, you know, he stood out not just as a running back and a return specialist, but also as like a slot receiver. I mean, it's dangerous. Um, there are people who had him rated with first round talent. Um, I think that if he can translate to the NFL, which I think he does, um, first it'll start in special teams and adding depth to the backfield. Um, I think his presence might also create a lot of different opportunities as far as matchups. Um, thinking about, you know, him and, uh, just having you know him in a two back set um, and a two tight end set, um, and forcing the defense into you know a complete commitment to stopping the run, and then you know you know uh, Amir Abdullah and him and you know the two tight ends split out, and all of a sudden that commitment to stop the run um, puts him at a serious mismatch, right? Um, so interesting to see um, what comes out of that. Also. Um, I wanted to talk a little bit about Jalen Guyton, which, um, you know, we added him uh, a little while back, but we didn't really get a chance to kind of go over it too much. Um, you know, he is another deep threat. Uh, I think we needed that extra speed. You know, pretty much it was like Trey Tucker was the deep threat, and then I don't know, right? Um, but he has the speed and ability to stretch the field. You, you can open it up for other uh, receivers, um, open up the running game. Um, he showed some flashes of brilliance when he was at the Chargers. Um, so interested to see how he plays because you know, as he gets integrated into the offensive scheme, um, he could you know have some dynamic and explosive plays that we remember. Um, he's that kind of player. Um, so I'm interested to think, uh, ask you guys, what do you think will be his role? Um, and you know, how does his presence affect other players? Um, yeah, you, know, you know, who's he snatching playing time from? Is he taking playing time from anybody? Um, I, I tend to think that, you know, he's a depth player um, who will play more if there's an injury, but we, we never know. I mean, we'll see. Um, let's see. Let's take a look at comments. And Peter Ryan says, Dylan is our secret weapon. The kid has a high ceiling and a plethora of talent and drive. Absolutely. Um, you know, uh, he, he seemed, he definitely seems to have the right attitude. Um, like a leader on his team, uh, rallying, you know, uh, you know, the team when they needed it, that sort of stuff. Um, and then he's got a relative athletic score of 9.2. You know, 10 yards split was something like 153. Uh, so one of the best, and in, in I think the second best running back as far as a 10 yard split in the whole draft. Um, so he's athletically gifted. You know, he can catch everything. I think we may have gotten something really special here, like a, a, an actual steal. Um, so, yeah, it's going to be interesting to see how that works out. Um, and exactly, you know, what, what happens with this playing time and that sort of thing, right, moving forward. So um, we got Raiders Way in the house. Salute. Thanks for showing out. Thanks for coming in. We value your your, your time here. Um, and if there's any questions or anything um, you guys want to put out there, I'm willing to answer any questions you guys have. Um, and we are still waiting for Western 
uh, to get the microphone issue handled, but he's working on it diligently, uh, like the smart man he is. So we were just talking about Gaiden, right? Um, I think Gaiden relates directly to uh, Trey Tucker. So one of the things that stood out to me in Aiden O'Connell's um, interview with on Max Crosby's podcast was that he talked about throwing with receivers all off season, but the one that he threw with all off season um, was Trey Tucker. So, um, considering you know the work they did and the fact that they already had great chemistry as rookies, um, Trey Tucker is my breakout offensive candidate this year. Um, I think he's going to have a huge impact. I think. Uh, yeah, I think that he is going to become like a reliable target for Aiden. I think his speed, route running, um, I think he's a dynamic player. Um, you know, you know the wrestling. You know, so he's a strong body dude. He can, he's he's really, I think, underrated um, athletically. You know, good vertical. You know, pretty much catches everything that comes his way. Um, so I think he's going to be a key make, playmaker um, for the Raiders this year. I think people around the league and other people may be surprised about what he does and how much he adds to the team. So I'm um, excited about that. Absolutely. Uh, and let's see. So let's see here. Okay, let's see, do we got audio yet? Oh, oh. looks like we're still having a little bit of an issue here, Western. So we're gonna, uh, we're gonna put Western in the background real quick and try to get this figured out. Uh, hold on a minute here, guys. All right, so um, not sure what's going on with this audio here. But we're going to try to get it figured out for you guys. In the meantime, um, let's catch up here. Um, let's see. We talked about Trey Tucker. Um, we talked about that. Oh, I wanted to talk about the quarterback battle. I mean, Aiden O'Connell, Gardner Minshew. Um, big difference. Uh, between how they looked um, and the OTA um, accuracy net drill thing, which was a story. Um, what are y'all's thoughts on that competition? I know that like uh, this is going to be you know through all of OTAs, all of training camp. Um, you know the, the coaching staff needs to consider you know style fit. The chemistry built with other players on the team, that sort of thing. Um, I think one of my questions is, is this a situation where we should have it figured out before preseason games really get started? Um, how should the snaps be divided? Is this something where we want to try to just give Aiden as many first string snaps as possible because we're pretty sure he's the guy or we want to split this up and really, you know, make it an open competition, um, you know, all the way through training camp and preseason. That's kind of my question. Um, because, you know, giving up first, first string snaps does have an effect, right, as far as readiness and that sort of thing. Um, you know, do we want to put all of our eggs in one basket? That sort of thing, right? So that's kind of, kind of the question I have for you guys moving forward because at some point we're going to make that determination. The question is how soon. Um, yeah. So I think that those are kind of the major questions that I have. So yeah, I guess let's, uh, let me know in the chat what you're thinking. Um, and let's see here. What is going on here with 
the audio for Western. I'm going to try to help him out, guys. Hold on a second. Hmm. Weird. Strange, strange, strange. Still having an issue hearing Western. Let's see if we can bring him in here. What's going on? Hey, is it working now? Can you hear me? We got Western. All right. All right. All right, Tino. Thank you, dude. Appreciate it. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Bye. Yeah. I had to call my brother, who is the genius <laughs> guru. He is like the freaking <laughs> the the computer guy that i had to call i don't know what was going on man i had to set up like like this the same way the whole time i just turned it on i tried to boot up and then nothing man and i was like going through different headphones i'm like trying like headphones <laughs> and mics and all yeah. that yeah red nation yeah. and hot beavers i'm glad i could finally be here and, <laughs> and the issues uh set uh yes i'm i'm ready to Get to work, brother. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank thank you for being here. And if you guys are not subscribed to Western Conference, go subscribe to Western Conference. Like fire, uh, breaking news, real analysis, you know, true Raider fan, the kind of stuff you want to you want to watch. So go ahead and, and appreciate hit you, my boy. Appreciate up, you. So. It's always a pleasure and honor, you know, to to uh, be here. Um, first off, I just want to give a shout out to uh, Raider D. Um, I saw something that uh, posted where he was having um, and uh, someone passed in his family, man. And I just want to say my 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 condolences, bro, and my prayers are out with you, Raider D. If you're watching this, man, you know, salute to you, brother, and I hope you and your family, man. Have a blessed, blessed day, man. And uh, prayers sent out to using yours, man. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. I uh, definitely, you know, wanted to kind of wait till you were here. But yeah, um, condolences out. You know, I'll let him uh, talk about it when he comes back or if yeah. he wants to talk about it. But yeah. Um, yeah, I just had to just, back. you know, say that just, yeah. just to let uh, Brader D knows mm -hmm. that uh, we have him, you know. Oh yeah, for prayers, sure. You know what I mean. So I, you know, I decided. Yeah, he's he's the missing amigo today. Um, so, you know. Yeah. But uh, but uh, I'm sure he'll he's out there watching, and uh, yeah, we love him. Yeah. So, so um, I missed. Uh, I, I I couldn't talk for like the first uh, ten. <laughs> oh, I, word, I know. What I had the whole court. But, <laughs> but uh, but I but I heard it all, you know what I mean. So I just want to go back to Dylan Labe here. So I mm -hmm. saw him. Uh, I mean, I I saw his film um, on YouTube, and um, the kid looks good, smooth. And um, I know a lot of people out there want to say that uh, he is our CMC. Um, as much mm -hmm. as I would like him to be our Christian. McCaffrey. Um, I don't mm -hmm. want to go that far yet and reach to say that he is our CMC because there's only one CMC. That guy is a unicorn. You know, he is like the uh, Deion Sanders of <laughs> running backs. You know what I mean? But um, mm -hmm. if if he could uh, perform up to CMC uh, and that capable of, of, of talent, you know what I mean? I'm ex extremely happy uh for that but for me as i always said he reminds me more of a danny woodhead um slash austin eckler um he he could run after the catch he has good hands for his position and um his breaks look very good and he has natural hands man so um i'm happy to have him on our team okay yeah for sure what if i were to tell you um that Dylan Lauby is more athletic than Christian McCaffrey. That would, um, that's no offense towards you <laughs> like that. You know what I mean? But, uh, that's a uh, tough to, um, mm -hmm. so to uh, agree with and see with, cause, um, I seen some of the, uh, off training programs that CMC does and some of the workouts that he does, man. And, um, 
that guy is something else, man. And um, even in college, man, Stanford, you know what I mean? Like uh, mm -hmm. watching him, you know, like, like he's just something different. But if Dylan Labe could be um, a fraction. Lobby. 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 Sorry, Lobby. Could be. <laughs> I can't get his name right. I always say it wrong. Um, but if he could be a, a fraction of the work talent and work ethic that CMC has, you know, I would be, that is a blessing for us, but um, it's just mm -hmm. hard for me to compare him to anything like CMC right now. And that's just me. Yeah. So see, just to give you guys a, a rundown, CMC's relative athletic score coming out of Stanford was 8.52. Um, you know, they're about the same size. Um, yeah. You know, they had identical verticals, um, almost identical forties, uh, you know, Lauby has a faster ten <laughs> yeah, yeah. split. Faster ten yard split, uh, about the same three cone. Uh, Lauby's relative athletic score was a nine point two compared to eight point five. So okay, he is like yeah, yeah, empirically yeah, more athletic. Yeah, than, yeah, than he yeah, was yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, of course, Christian McCaffrey is not the player he now that he was when he come, came out of college. Right, he got oh, pro definitely training program, and like you said worked his ass off, right? So yeah. uh, what I'm saying is Dylan Lowey is not Christian McCaffrey right now. But yeah, he, he has all the potential in the world to there replicate you the things that, that Christian McCaffrey did in the pros. He's athletically yeah. superior, actually. So it's not like he has a limitation athletically, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I, you know, and then um, I, I just think the field vision that CMC has, man, like it's something special, man. Like he – is a field general man like he sees like his his vision his cone you know what i mean it just mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. like and, yeah. um but you know what i mean i'm, I'm hoping that uh dylan lobby <laughs> lobby could uh lobby, lobby could uh, <laughs> uh pan out you know to to be our cmc i just don't want to say that he is our cmc yet until i i just see him on the field yeah. i don't need to see I, I, austin eckler is good enough for me but, you know, like he, oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he doesn't yeah. have to be a team. He could just be Eckler, yeah. and that would be, you know, that, yeah, gold. that would be phenomenal, right. man. <laughs> yeah, right. Um, so we we're just talking about AOC, um, and that whole situation. Wait, Ryan says, I say until AOC gives them a reason to not be our starter day one, say, I say stick with them. So we're talking about the snaps, right? Um, uh, what do you think about that? Dividing up the snaps, do we give first team snaps to both of them? Open competition? Do we, you know, start that way maybe in the beginning and then try to determine this before the first preseason game? Like, what what, what do you see? There? So, me, um, my personal opinion on that, I believe that AOC uh, earned and has earned the majority of reps. Um, no salt or shade to Gardner, but. Um, I didn't think we signed Gardner to take over AOC's job. Um, mm -hmm. Also, based on the uh, footage that I've seen from them in camp, um, as uh, you said this too, um, Gardner was throwing some uh, ducks, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, but AOC, you know, just like watching him, um, he is precise and he was throwing lasers. Um, but the difference between them is. Um, Garner showed that he's definitely more mobile and agile on the field, but he doesn't have the same mm -hmm. arm talent that AOC has. And I feel like mm -hmm. the best position for us to win now is to go with AOC unless proven otherwise. Um, going yeah. forward in the preseason um, pertaining to them, um, mm -hmm. I feel like you uh, – me, I would start uh, AOC in preseason two games maximum. Um, that's just me because I, I don't want him to get hurt early. And um, Gardner, I I would uh, let him start our preseason game three. And then uh, game four, we could go with uh, Bradley and mm -hmm. um, Anthony Brown. Okay. Okay. So you're basically saying, AOC, it's your job. You know, unless something happens in preseason, I guess that changes. Yeah, you know, um, un unless like Garner completely outworks him and outperforms him, I just don't really see AOC 
relinquishing that spot. Um, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, I, I just see that as AOC's job to uh, lose, honestly. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to get this in real quick. Um, you know, yeah, salute to Ritter D. Um, Red Ryan, salute, you. brother. Yeah, salute, Red Ryan. Thank you for that. Um, Ritter's way says, if they're in competition with each other, then they should. Uh, then they both should throw for snaps and duke it out and see who wins the position. So he wants a fair competition, right? Yeah, yeah. Get, so, so, um, yeah. Uh, allow me to retort, you know, on my on, uh, <laughs> on what I was saying. So, I definitely believe in competition, which is what I want them to have. I definitely don't want them um, to just give AOC the like job, but I just believe that the talent and then the position that we're at now, um, I just believe that AOC is going to win uh, it it out in uh, camp and um, Gardner. Um, like, like he he is a dog, you know. Um, great, great, great kid. You know, he has great talent. But um, I definitely want the competition there. But I just believe that AOC is gonna beat him out, and this is uh, it's AOC's mm-hmm. job to lose. Yeah. No. Um, but Ryan, he says the AP and the team believe in AOC, and so do I. Definitely believe in him. I think he's gonna win the job. I think the key here is actually not AOC or Gardner Minshew. I think the key is going to be the play of our offensive line. I, I was going to say the same thing, brother. <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I think if our offensive line is excelling, then I think there's not a, a strong way for Minshew to make a play for that position. Mm-hmm. Now, if we're having some, you know, you know, offensive line communication issues, and guys are still trying to put it together early in the season, you know, um, I could see it going a different way, right? Because it could yeah. affect you know, how uh, Aiden looks versus, Absolutely. you know, you, you know. Because um, if uh, you don't have no protection on the O-line, it doesn't matter who's back there. It could be uh, Mahomes or Lamar Jackson. If there ain't nobody to pro- protect him, then he's going to have an erratic game when he's throwing the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So Way thinks that, yeah, he's going to win the uh, – AOC is going to win the position. He really does. Um, and yes, slew right away, right? And then, and you know, we, we back to, have- um, uh, AOC, uh, also as well. Um, I just based on what I've seen, he completely toned down too, man. He he looks good. Um, lost, lost some uh, weight, you can see it in mm-hmm. his gut, like, like that, mm-hmm. gut is there anymore. Mm-hmm. You know? and um, he yeah. he looks good. Yeah, I mean, you know, that's what you want to see. I think it was pretty ironic that uh, we're looking at AOC all trimmed down. His gut's gone. And uh, the Mahomes, did you see the Mahomes photo? Yeah, yeah, his uh, dad (laughs) bod photo. Yeah, man, uh, he has a little uh, gut going on over there, which is better for us. So I hope he's eating that uh, (laughs) barbecue. Hey, you <laughs> know. Piece barbecue over there, man, and keep, uh, keep on, I'm, I'm, keep on, keep on. You know, I I want my my homes keep eating and gaining weight. <laughs> you know, that's better for us. So, but but yeah, um, that just tells you, you know, that um, he's not uh, keep keeping himself in a uh, uh, shape while AOC is at training camp. You know, he's been there every single day. I'm sure Pastor is like, uh, you know, I don't got to be there. Um, I could just turn it on whenever I want to. But, yeah. um, and, you know, um, Jordan even, you know, Jordan was, you know, great, but he still practiced. You know, he's, he's still putting mm-hmm. that work. You know, got to yeah. yeah. gotta keep working on, on yourself. But I kind of believe that Patrick feels uh, at the point of his career now to where he's mm-hmm. too comfortable. <laughs> It might be. Maybe he needs a little little fire lit under him. They should draft somebody. You know what I mean? Just yeah. You know, got to yeah. move forward eventually. No. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> yeah, that's not happening. So the the other thing I want to talk about is uh, DJ Glaze, who stood out yep. in uh, rookie minicamp, right? Um, you know, players like Glaze, and then you know Lowby. You know, we've added a lot of multiple, you know, Bowers, multiple position players who are really mm-hmm. versatile, you know, uh, Glaze can play tackle or guard, yeah. right, um, on both sides of the line. So he's, 
you know, uh, probably going to be a swing tackle uh, this year, I would think. Yeah. Um, you know, um, so um, I've, I've said this in the past, too. Scouts and coaches, they always said that DJ Glaze, he had the uh, talent. Um, mm-hmm. Even Hondo said that there was just minor things that he had to uh, work on and craft on, and he mm-hmm. would be a key starter in the NFL. And um, mm-hmm. I, I, I just from the footage that I seen from uh, camp as well, you know, like he's uh, he's playing his darkness, you know, to like to like prove like, hey man, you know, I ain't a waste pick, but um, mm-hmm. I believe that he was a, a solid choice. And um, oh, yeah. if, if he just works on those uh, things that he has to improve on, like Hondo said, and um, mm-hmm. I just think that he'll be um, a great player for us uh, sooner rather than later. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you you go back and look at his uh, his tape, and then you know he the the offense he played in was pass happy. They they threw a lot of balls. Like they yeah. he has many pass block. Uh, uh, plays as uh, Jackson Power Johnson at Oregon, just to give you guys an idea of like mm-hmm. the amount of throws we're talking about here. It's like over 600, um, close to 700 plays. And yeah. he, gave him, he gave him three sacks, right? Um, Jackson Power Johnson gave up zero. <laughs> so that's, yeah. that's right. But he only gave up three sacks at the tackle position, right? Um, part of that was that left tackle. Um, he's more of a right tackle in the NFL, but we'll see, right? Um, so, um, since we're talking about uh, Jackson Bowers here, I heard something, but I couldn't really find no further details or updates about it. I, I heard that he had a slight injury in camp. Did you hear anything about that? Um, you know, they're keeping it kind of close to the vest. I know yeah, he okay. hasn't been out there a little bit. Um, he might be nursing something, but it's so early and they don't have to say anything, right? Yeah, now. yeah, yeah, yeah. So they pretty much uh, will just be like, yeah, uh, you know, injury right side of his body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they give you almost yeah, no You know, because I honestly panicked. <laughs> you know, when I first heard that, I was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, and I went on the internet and I tried, you know, to like, like search yeah. for it. But there was nothing out there. Nothing yeah. about that, you know. And I'm like, oh, okay. Yeah, I don't think it's anything serious. But, yeah, so let's get let's get caught up on the, uh, the chat here. Yeah. Um, Reader Ryan says, AOC, Tom Brady tone, laugh out loud. Yeah. Like, he's literally working with Tom Brady's trainer. Like, literally doing the, like, you know, TV 12 stretch bandy. I don't know. Whatever he's doing out there. Just keep doing that. It worked before. So let's go with that. Yeah. Um, he says, happy about the whole homo <laughs> getting, getting comfortable. It's getting real comfortable. Yeah, man. Getting real comfortable. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he says, uh, love Hondo. Man, we love Hondo, bro. Like, Hondo is the dude. Yeah, yeah. Love yeah, Hondo. He's cool, man. He's cool. Yeah, yeah. I haven't got a chance to watch the Amy Trask interview yet. Same I here. Really watch that. Yeah. Same like, here. I, yeah, had man. I have to. When you're like content it. making, you end up having to make the contents of watching the content, which is one of those kind of decisions that have to be made like am i gonna watch stuff right now i'm gonna make stuff right now yeah, yeah. i'm definitely gonna get to get get into that because amy trask is a legend i love her yeah. on twitter she yeah, slays man. people on twitter slays yeah. people don't don't come for her don't come for her <laughs> yeah don't yeah, do man. it don't do it yeah yeah a but yeah i like that <laughs> yeah that's what she is uh, for real yeah um but yeah, the the interview with AOC was phenomenal. Did you get a chance to watch that? Um, the AOC Max Crosby. Not, so I, I seen highlights of it, but but not the whole whole thing of it. Yeah, if you get a chance, sit down and watch it. Um, he he's an impressive dude. Um, yeah, very 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 even keeled. Um, obviously, you know the only question I do have is like. Does he really get mad? Does he ever get like? Does he get mad? Does he get like? You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I believe that um he does, but he just hides it and he doesn't show it. You know what I mean? But it's there. You know what I mean? And I was and and I'm sure who whoever gets him, you know, angry or whatever, like he like 
like in his brain he's like all right i'm 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 gonna do something <laughs> you know what i mean but he just doesn't show it you know what i mean he ain't, he ain't gonna wonder. show his uh hand of uh cards yeah yeah i wonder what that leadership's gonna be like moving forward i want to i want to know yeah you know, but you know, because uh, he's he, got it. You know, every good quarterback I've ever been around is kind of an asshole, just a little bit. Yeah, yeah, that's 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 uh, uh true, man. Like like um, one one person who I guess shout out to my shout out to my cousin Miguel, um, Philip <laughs> Rivers hated him, but he had that fire, man. You know, he had that fire. But 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 you know, a lot of uh, yeah, man, you're 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 right. Uh, most of the good quarterbacks are assholes you know aside from like just uh, a little eight, bit you gotta eight, be and like eli you know they're like nice yeah. humble guys you know but aside from yeah. that you know well it's kind of all shucks humble like yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i bet she yeah, well <laughs> they're i'm sure they're good guys but they got you know they got the swagger but they, they believe that they're special they get the whole manning family thing they don't even have to to do anything with that, right? They're just gonna yeah. swag. Just the I think that uh, Eli gets more angrier than Peyton <laughs> for sure. You know what I mean? And like he shows it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, like I don't know. I guess I'm just used to like Rich Gannon, you know. Oh and yeah, Jeff Hostetler. Yeah, right, yeah, like, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you get pissed, bro. Like throw a helmet at you, bro. Like you know what I mean? Like yeah, <laughs> yeah man. I mean, you know, even uh, even like a Kerry Collins was pretty, yeah, pretty fired yeah. up guy. You know what I mean? When uh, when things weren't going right, mostly at Jerry Porter. So yeah, but Jerry, good old so, Jerry Porter, man. Jerry, good old Jerry, Jerry Porter. Porter. He giveth, he taketh away. <sighs> yeah, man. Uh, Post uh, Tim Brown and uh, Rice, I thought he was gonna be that guy, man. But man, it just ah shucks, <laughs> you know. <laughs> right, right. Ray Ryan makes a great point. He says he can't even suggest a certain portion to watch because the whole interview was amazing. That's one I yeah, exactly. Took yeah. the words right out of my mouth. I, I can't even say like watch this part or that part. Like you kind of just like let it soak, man. You know, just like watching that was was pretty cool. Um yeah, yeah, he's definitely you know, he said that he's they asked him like who do you model your game after? What quarterbacks? And he said there's only one. And it was Brady, right? And then, I was gonna figure. Yeah, it was Mr. Tom Brady. <laughs> yeah, and then he's working with uh, Alex Guerrero and like, you know, picking his brain on on this and that. And who? I just yeah, want to. I just. This who, is a who better than than to pick Tom Brady's brain than AOC? And he's making all of the yeah. because if I was AOC and if Tom Brady was there too. <laughs> I would just have an open notebook and say, tell me everything there is to know. Tell me yeah. everything. You know? Yeah. Not only does he have to get conversations with Tom Brady, but he gets conversations with Tom Brady's trainer who was there the whole time. So you can see these like dual perspectives on it. Yeah. I mean, th- this is like my draft day dream. When we picked AOC, I, I want to just, again, say um, I want attribution. When we picked him, I said that he is better than his draft position. Oh, that- yeah that if he would go through the same kind of core training in the off season that Brady and Bray, uh, uh, Breeze did, that he could take a huge leap. This was yeah. way back when we originally drafted him. I knew he would do this because this is who he is, right? So this is uh, this is all just coming to fruition, right? And you know, we're only a couple steps from Brady, guys. Just yeah. hold the faith. Hold the faith, okay? Yeah. It's coming. Yeah. So... <laughs> Uh, Rita Ryan says, you can see it when he's calling out plays. He has that intense look. I believe it's in there. Hopefully AP can bring it out of him. That is, that is my question. Like, when is he going to, like, just be, you know, because he is a perfectionist. You can see that he's a perfectionist, and he holds himself mm-hmm. to those kind of perfectionist standards. But he's such a nice guy, right? Yeah. That he doesn't yeah. want to, you know, right? But at some point, he's going to have to, like, let it rip and just be like, what the fuck are yeah. you doing? Yeah. This is not the play call. Learn your effing playbook or get off of the field, right? Like, yeah. at some point, that's what you, I think you need from your quarterback, right? Is to, is to know that if you disappoint him, that's going to be an issue. Yeah. I, you know, I, I just think that new quarterbacks that get drafted out of college, like, like the first or second year, you know, they want to be that quiet, humble guy, 
and then you know after mm -hmm. you know what i mean all that it just gets out of them and then that's when they really get to be the player that they want to be um but i truly honestly believe that aoc and i'll say this here that he is a good guy on and off the field but if you quirk him the wrong way i uh I don't see a problem or he has a problem showing it to you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. My two cents. What's up, brother? Good to see you, man. Good to see you, brother. Oh, what's up? Thank you for coming, my two cents. Salute. So, yeah. Um, so you think that deep down inside, Aiden has a anger monster that he hides from the rest of us. Yeah, you know, like, um, I believe all of us have that uh, inner cracking, you know, in us. It just takes something <laughs> to just get it out of us, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, um, well, AP, AP's the dude to do it, I think. Yeah, yeah. I was I was just going to say that right now. Like, who better than An Antonio Pierce? Because Antonio Pierce has yeah. the gab, and he has a mouth. Yeah. And then I believe that. I mean, uh, he'll he figure it out, out, you know what I mean? You know? Maybe they should play dodgeball, but uh, with wrenches. Yeah. Right? yeah. If you can hey. dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. Yeah. So, <laughs> hey, I, AOC would be throwing laser dodgeballs, just pegging it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, get them all fired up. Yeah, man. Oh, no. I just imagine Gardner Minshew just, like, throwing it over the whole thing. <laughs> <laughs> but... I bet you oh, that Garner, too high. I, but, but, but Garner will, will be the last one to get hit because he's good at it. Yeah. <laughs> he's he's yeah, mobile. He'll be like, yeah. Art oh, wheels shit. and shit. Like, yeah. 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 Totally. That's hilarious. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> I don't know how he's got the dodgeball, but I love that movie. <laughs> um, so, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be interesting kind of to see how it shakes out. Um, with him kind of taking that leadership reins or um, or not. I mean, I think it's going to make or break the situation here because you've got to go with the locker room, right? And I think the locker room really wants it to be Aiden. I would assume they do, but, yeah, you know, Gardner Mitchell has his way, man. He When he got to college, he took over, you know, the the previous quarterback, I think, literally, like, passed away, man. And, like, Gardner Minshew just showed up and won the locker room over within, like, a week and a half, man. Like, he's that yeah. kind of person. Um, so. Yeah. You know, if, yeah. if if Gardner were to take a AOC's job, which I just don't see it happening, but I'm just saying if he did, I would not be opposed to it at all. Um, mm -hmm. I feel like we have one of the best uh, one-two quarterback tandems, you know, in the – NFL, because worst comes to worst, mm -hmm. uh, knock on wood, that if AOC does get hurt, then we got guard dog, you know, there to back him mm -hmm. up. But um, yeah, <laughs> Brock Bowers. Brock Bowers. <laughs> yes. Oh man. Peter Ryan with the super chat coming yeah, through. Brock Bowers. That's That's the dude. dude. <laughs> Every time I, I I hear that, I just think of wasted talent just getting yelled at <laughs> from graphics saying Brock Bowers. <laughs> <laughs> love it man hilarious yeah, dude hilarious I, shout I, out I to wasted to shout out to grab friends too like like they're all who and i'm like brock yeah, bauer, bauer. <laughs> hey graf <laughs> graf killed it with that one yo shout out shout out <laughs> for real <laughs> wasted and his word of the day is fire also wasted word of the day fire. <laughs> guys they're hilarious yeah definitely watch yeah, those man. guys yeah um, man they're 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 <laughs> they're cool dudes man yeah, i mean i i i Watch them all, you know what I mean? Like they're so. Oh yeah, I watch everybody, man. You know but, what I mean? And and and, yeah. and I always say in the past, it's it's cool to see what we all um, envision in our brains, and we all have our piece. You know what I mean? That we can say because yeah. we're all from the same cloth, but we're just cut different on that cloth. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, different pieces of the same dream, man. That's all we are. So it's beautiful. So let's see. Raider Ryan says, "Let the best man win the job." Yes. Absolutely. So speaking of letting the best man win the job, what camp battles, specifically what kind of one camp battle that maybe people aren't talking about, are you interested in? It's got you kind of thinking thoughts. Uh, 
Mr. Western. Um, I don't really uh, like. I, I I haven't really thought that deep into it. Um, I I feel like most of the guys um, have their um, starting jobs aside from maybe uh, Diablo because uh, he's kind of kind of wishy washy. But um, the most player that I could say that I'm looking forward to have a breakout season um, breakout. And, and this is kind of off the track here, but I, I just been, this has been on my mind is um, Michael Mayer. Um, I believe that he's fully healthy mm-hmm. now. I feel like that he's mm-hmm. going to be um, a breakout player on offense and on defense. I'm going to say Coons. Okay. Okay. All right. So I have Mayer. Uh, you have Mayer and Coons. I have uh, Trey Tucker. On offense and on defense, I'm gonna say Tyree Wilson. All right. Nah, okay. Like okay. Yeah. Great, great choices too, man. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so yeah, let's let's put it to the chat. If you think, uh, like, who are, who are your breakout players on offense and defense for the Raiders this year? Who are you guys looking at that uh, that you think is gonna come out of nowhere, especially on the national scene? Because, like, sweet God, if a Raider does something on the national scene, they're gonna be like, what? They have a player. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. this All right. So uh, my two cents is watching some Purdue film. Believe Con All Twelve <laughs> has more mobility than given credit for. Not much more, but definitely wasn't the statue he seemed to be last year. Once Aiden catches up to speed, of course, I believe is what he's saying. Um, yeah, I think absolutely. First, uh, he started off being told not to run. Right. Um, and Joshua Daniels doesn't want quarterbacks scrambling or getting hurt that way. You're not supposed to run. So he's like taking that out of his, his thought process initially. Um, then, you know, also the, the thing about uh, pocket presence for why you see struggle, where he struggle with it is if you just kind of think about your own life, man, like, you know, in your own skin, when you are uh, confused or, you know, there's a lot of new information and new stuff coming in. Um, you're not very like attuned with your like kind of inner self, right? Your like sixth sense or whatever. Because like pocket presence, it's like a feel, right? Like you feel the pocket collapsing, right? And that feel is interfered by the fact that you're trying to process the fact that you're, you know, it's a new offense and you know your nerves are, you know, are shot because it's your first start or whatever against the Chargers and Khalil Mack or whatever, right? You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So I think just not being a rookie and having more experience allows that kind of stuff to kind of settle in. Um, and yeah, he is more mobile. Um, you go back and look at Purdue, like he's the kind of, you know, you can you move in the pocket, move around, you know, pick up yards, that sort of thing. Um, actually put Aiden O'Connell through the scoring model based on, his play in college, my, my rookie scoring model that I've been using for the, all the quarterbacks. Um, and he scored uh, it was a 7.71, which in that model means he is pretty close to like a Dak Prescott type quarterback, right? Coming out of college. Um, as far as his, his ability, his arm has gotten stronger. No. Uh, I think that he's gotten a little bit more mobile. Um, so I think that he's really kind of raised himself into that, you know, eight-ish range um, where, you know, you know, that, I think Dak Prescott, that, that sort of level, Dak Prescott, you know, Derek Carr, those kind of quarterbacks. Yeah. Um, you, if you have the defense and the, the skill position players around them, you can win with those type of players. That, that's what I see there. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then I, uh, you said it perfectly. And then I just want to add on to that. Um, like you said, he wasn't asked to be a scrambling quarterback last year. And uh, just like how my two cents said, yeah, man, in, in college, um, he could definitely move if he has to move. Um, but he that's not what he was uh, asked to, to do with McDaniels. And he was just doing what the coach told him to do. But on a given uh, time, if he was under duress or pressure, if he had to move out of the pocket or scramble to 
get the first down, he could absolutely do that. It's just not something that he was asked to do. Um, and the cool thing about him is that, uh, yes, he could be a traditional statue guy, but he also has the, the feet and mobility to move if he has to. So, yeah, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I think um, I think he's more mobile than given credit for, and we'll we'll yeah, start absolutely. to see that this year. Yeah, yeah, especially with all the salsa, the salsa dance. <laughs> that he was, he was yeah. you know what I mean. It's gonna show up for sure. Um, so let's see. Um, looks like what we got here. Red Ryan is excited about the tight end room. Yeah, I mean. Our tight end room's got to be the best in the NFL, right? Like, it has to be. Yeah, man. I can't like, really, you know. Brock Bowers. <laughs> <laughs> right? And then, and then, and, yeah. yeah, Brock <laughs> Bowers, right? Yeah. And Mike and, Mayer. And, man, like, yeah. like that is going to be something spectacular to uh, yeah. watch the field, man. I can't wait. Yeah, Harrison Bryant uh, is a good tight end also. Mm -hmm. um, fathering him is a good tight end, you know, so like impressive room for sure. And then he just also says the running back room. So that's an interesting place. Um, I think both of these are places for competition that we need to see figured out. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I think Zeus is going to be the starter day one for sure, but it's definitely going to be a uh, running back by committee, but mm -hmm. Zeus will get the majority of the snaps for sure. How many running backs do you think we carry? Five or six? So we're going to go with, so we got Zeus. Five. Five? We're going to go with five. All right. Who is the five? We're going to go with Zeus, Lobby. Um, can't think of the old dude's name now. The, Abdullah. Yeah, Abdullah. Um, those, 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 those are going to be the starting three, um, and then for the, the other two, um, I, I think it's going to be road rotational. So, so, so the whole thing is going to be rotational. But when it comes to the other two, um, I, I just really like I don't really see them getting as much um, playing time. Like the main mm -hmm. three will will be Zeus, Lobby, and Abdullah. Mm -hmm. One second here. I'm on the live. I can't do it. So um, <laughs> people are going to call me. Yeah. So, yeah, I can see that, that uh, those are going to be the main three, you think. What about, uh, we got Madison, right, that we signed from Minnesota. Yeah. Um, I think he'll get mixed in there. And then if there's a fifth back, I guess uh, it, it could be, I mean, man, I guess there's a kid from UCLA um, that we have to look at. Uh, let's see. I'm trying to think. Uh, I'm trying to remember the kid's name that we got as an undrafted free agent. Um yeah, there's, 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 there's yeah, we, we got so many players. I do the same thing where it's, it's hard to just click, you know, on those players. You know what I mean? But, but yeah, man, we, we got a lot of uh, young youth on our team. Yeah, and then yeah, uh, Cincy McCormick. There you go. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, Cincy See, I like um, Britton Brown. Yeah. Yeah. I just want to go back to my two cents is a uh, comment here. So he's saying uh, Zeus, Madison, Abdullah, and Lobby. Um, I like Madison also as well. Like like he's a, a good um, pass catching back. Um, mm -hmm. I could see definitely him and Abdullah like where they'll be in competition for that third spot there. That makes sense. Um, so, yeah, my two cents. Thank you very much, Britton Brown. And then Sincere, looks like Singer. That's funny. Yeah. Autocorrect's awesome. Um, 
So let's go back here. He says that his predictions for show outs on offense are Zeus, Tucker, and Mayer. Okay. Good job, for sure. And then on defense, Christian uh, Christian Watkins, Coons, and then hopefully Tyree on D. Yeah. I mean, good picks. Tyree, Tyree shows out then. I mean, sweet Lord. <laughs> Yeah, Jeez. man. Good luck. Yeah. Good luck with that, man. Good, just good, good luck. luck. Just good yeah. luck, right? Yeah. 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 Says, I want to see. I want to see Jack Jack on defense. I think he could keep his social media presence down. He'll go off calling it now. Five touchdowns, interceptions, or fumbles. Yeah. Listen, he'll be fine. Look, Long Beach probably stand up. Okay, we will be all yeah. right. He's from my city. We good. Jack Jack got this. Be cool. Be cool. We gonna, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? It's yeah. good. He, he he know how to keep the main thing the main thing. That's an important part of it, right? Yeah. All right. So, um, Ritter Ryan says Zeus on offense is his call. I like it. I like it. And uh, Graf wants McCormick. Yeah. Um, yeah. He always Raider, I have a theory. Up. All right. I have a theory that Graf is actually Sincere McCormick's agent. Oh, <laughs> but he's not telling anybody. Okay, but, I like uh, it. right. Uh, I see you, Graf. I see you. Graf. <laughs> uh, I will do the same thing. I will do the same thing. I'm playing. Yeah. Uh, so I want to see what Sincere does too. You know, he hasn't really had a, a clear shot. Um, he looked good in some of this preseason. Like the, I, I don't know, it was a couple preseasons ago, looked really good. Yeah. So you know, I'm sure he's probably matured. Had a chance to hit the. NFL training program and that good stuff. So we'll see what he does. Um, it's going to be interesting, right? Um, all right. So we're creeping up on an hour, guys. Let's just kind of, we're going to roll through and just kind of make sure uh, that we hit all these little topics. I don't want to leave um, Western out of any of this cool stuff I get to talk about. Yeah. Um, Jalen Guyton, what do you think about that signing? Um, so I like that. So, so, so Guyton is. I think he's going to mesh well with our offense because it's uh, Tom Telesso's guy. He knows Guyton, um, and he's a big size dude. Good mm -hmm. um, speed, good solid hands, and um, I see him definitely making some big plays for us this season for sure. Yeah, I mean, big guy, four three five guy, right? Well, not big, but like plays bigger than than the six one. Yeah. Um, I feel like he's got a you know a good vertical, you know hands catcher guy. So yeah, I mean he's I think he's gonna make some dynamic plays for sure. Yeah, um, you know barring um so so I just want to go back to Michael Gallup here. Now I like Gallup too. He has all the talent in the world, but I'm just a little mm -hmm. bit more higher on Guyton this season because he he's mm -hmm. doesn't have a track record of histories like Guyton does. But I don't know. I'm sorry. Um, Gallup. Gallup is more uh, written injuries. on injuries. Right. Yeah. But, but he's more talented, for sure. I mean, Michael Gallup, if he stays healthy, um, I think people sleep on him a little bit. He he has the potential to be like a 1A kind of guy. Could, could uh, Gallup turn into our Nelson Aguilar? Right? I, that's a beautiful call. I love yeah. it. I you love know? it. Oh, Could Nelson Aguilar. Our, that like, brings back some good memories. Could, we just, could he be our Nelson Aguilar, man? You know? Looking <laughs> back car, rolling to the right, throwing a long yeah, ball to Nelson Aguilar. Oh, man, those are the days. Those are the days. Those yeah. The days. But, no, um, absolutely. Gallup, you know, the thing about Gallup is that he gets up. He can gallop. He's got a nice vertical. Yeah, definitely. Right? <laughs> Big hands, yeah. nice vertical. You know, catches pretty much everything thrown his way. Good routes, right? Means you're like quintessential possession receiver, and he can play on the outside. Um, yeah. You know, so that's the kind of guy you can actually, you know, he's a 1A kind of guy, I think, if yeah. he's fully healthy. His health problem has been what's kind of hold, holding him back more than anything else. Um, is he a burner? Nope. Does he get open deep? Yes, because he runs good routes and you know yeah. he's fast enough. So yeah, I think uh, we got some some real depth at wide receiver, and um, I feel bad for guys like DJ Turner, which I think this could oh, yeah. be his swan song or whatever. 
yeah, because yeah, man. I mean, you know, Lauby is going to push him as a returner, and then you've got all these, you know, receivers that we brought in, and you know, we haven't even talked about uh, Raider D's guy, you know, Ramel Keaton. Yeah, who's drafted free yeah. agent who looks. Uh, yeah, that's that's. Uh, I mean, I, he's he's. I I like him too. He's 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 he's, you know, great great kid. I just base for me. So I said this on your last live. I I really like Tulu Griffin. I, I mean, I know he has not the longest arms and all that, but I just feel like overall, um, mm-hmm. he's a good player. You know what I mean? And, and yeah, he's fast. Right, yeah. like he's fast. He's got he's good with the ball in his hands. Uh, you know, I think he's one of those kind of gadget players too. All right, we'll see what he does on special teams. Yeah, um, but I could see him and Lauby back on kick return. So you know, depending on where yeah. you decide you kick it to, right? Like, yeah, yeah I could see. So you know, um, interesting, interesting. Yeah, I like Tulu a lot too. Um, and then Tulu and Keaton Belter. Are special, yeah. Um, Eduardo, thank you for coming in. He says, All eyes on our stars. Tucker will be our sleeper. That's my call on offense is that Tucker is the dude, but uh, I can see why other people are looking at other players, right? Um, you know, Zeus is probably gonna come out of nowhere for a lot of people, too. Um, yeah. but let's see, Peter Ryan says, I like it, and I'm glad you do, right? Right, that's that's a good thing, and then, yes, we're saluting Eduardo. Eduardo is saluting us back because he's a cool dude. And uh, Ritter Ryan says, do you remember Rambo? Never made the team, but a speedster. I do. I do remember him. Uh, yeah, Long Beach guy. I, so, so so me, I love... Long, Long, Beach, Long Beach Poly. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Fast. <laughs> Re- receivers too you know i really like you know the down down the field play action deep stretch the field one play touchdown guys and then mm-hmm. this is just me speaking and i'm going back here guys whenever i think of a speedster that was on the raiders for for for, for, for some reason for me and i'm sure and your guys eyes too you guys might have other players um i'm gonna say uh Mention on this is Cliff Branch for sure, but for oh, me, yeah, uh, James James Jet man, James Jet, yeah, yeah. So like yeah. Cliff Branch, Cliff Branch is uh, the the icon, right? Like, yeah, a flash of light, a puff of smoke, and he's gone. Yeah, right? like special. Um, but James Jet is the guy I, I grew up watching as our deep threat. Right? Yeah, so James, yeah. James Jet, um, Andre Risen, you know, like like. Bad like, like, Moon Rising. Yeah, you know, yeah. like, like, like yeah. I'm fascinated back with those 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 teams of that era, man. Like like yeah. I was so happy, man. Like Andre, Bad and Moon Rising, you know, and uh yeah. and yeah. the Rocket Ishmael, that's a name yeah, too, that's a, man. Yes, <laughs> that's yeah. another name right there. The too. Rocket boy, the Heisman. Rocket. Yeah, that that was a that was a special time. Yeah, you know, we had a. Uh, Mervin Fernandez and Willie Galt, right? Yeah, uh, and getting getting bombs from Jay Schrader, and mm-hmm. uh, you know competing, you know getting the, some of those bombs from Steve Berline. We should have kept Steve Berline, but uh, <laughs> neither yeah, man, it's the good old days, man. It's the good old days. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I guess so. Oof, I mean, you know, it was some days, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Harvey Williams, Rupert Harvey Williams. Anyway, yeah, yeah, dude, player. yeah, yeah. It, it's it's funny yeah. you say that because uh, wasted, and then they 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 brought him up too, man. It's brought back a lot of memories. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a uh, it was a cool time back then. You know, LA Coliseum. I used to go to those games. You know, be in the the fan section. Watching Bruce Wilkerson, who I was just talking to the other day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, Man, yeah. I was literally in those stands, like <laughs> stomping on the on the metal to try to make it louder. Like it was that's very, cool. See, uh, that's that, that's one thing that I never got to experience was going to the games there in L.A. when they were in L.A. I've I've been to yeah, plenty yeah. of games when when they were here in uh, Oakland, but yeah, yeah, not 
not when when they were in in LA. So that's one thing that I am jealous to all the Raider fans out there who see seeing the games at the Coliseum because that was one um, experience that I wish I could be a part of for sure. Oh yeah, no, we would. Uh, me and my dad would uh, cut out a out of Bible study um, immediately, and we'd like take off our tie and rush nice. over to the Coliseum <laughs> oh, and uh, maybe so, get a scalp ticket if we needed it. And then we get up in there. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah it was, uh, I mean, so not that cool. we do anything illegal. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> hey, totally, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah, it was, it, was, it was some good times back then. That's for sure. Um, so let's see. Let's look at it. Cause we got some people. we got some, some stuff to catch up on here. So we talked about Guyton. We talked about Lobby. We talked about Brock Bowers. Right? That's my boy Brock Bowers, baby. <laughs> what do you what do you think about the six million dollar raise that we gave to Max Crosby without an extension and what that says about you know our commitment to the team, to players? What do you what do you what do you think about that idea? That we well, did that? Max Crosby is our leader on the team, and um, he definitely deserves the $6 million raise. Um, he still has three seasons left on his four-year contract, um, and I just believe when that contract is up, we're going to re re-sign him no matter what. And um, I believe that Max Crosby is one of those players. It's going to be a Raider for life no matter what. And I remember when – when Crosby first first came out to my friends out there, if you're watching my personal friends, um, I remember when they were telling me, um, and I banter on the, them on this all the time. Um, so I saw something in Crosby before he came the Condor that he is now, and they used to always bash me saying, "Crosby ain't the guy; it's Arden Key, you know, and all this, you know." And I go. You know, and then um, I tell them now, you know, I go, well, where's Arden Key now? <laughs> you know, yeah. and um, yeah. that's one thing that I always rub in their face. You know what I mean? But um, I believe that Crosby deserves every d- dollar that he earned on on his raise. Um, mm-hmm. And um, I just don't see him um, ever going to a different team, honestly. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Great, great insight there on that on Crosby early, right? If yeah. anybody wants to, to get it in a quick, quick like uh, cheat code to figuring out pass rushers, check out their ten yard split, look at their arm length, and yeah. then look at their their motor. Yeah, you know, pass rushers with a motor, a good ten yard split, right, and arm length, figure it out. They they um uh, so so my, my my friend said too that uh the the, the second player was uh Ngakwe that that Arden Key and Ngakwe were the guys on on the defense out that, that that were the leaders you know and I'm like no nah, man it's it's Mass Crosby man wow. like just his whole get up he is a Raider you know what I mean and um yeah my, my uh personal friends don't like to bring that up because i was right on that call <laughs> bragging rights nice yeah nice having bragging rights in your circle of friends you know so you can just yeah. walk around with your head held high all the time when <laughs> yeah well, it doesn't matter what you say because i called max crosby and you called yeah him. yeah Ooh, and like and like they're now they're like super you know pro max crosby now and i'm like oh well how about those rainy days <laughs> you know <laughs> right well this is why you have a writer channel yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Raider Ryan, Raider Ryan. <laughs> the Oakland feeling cannot be replicated. Ain't that the truth? Yeah. I true. agree, man. I yeah. agree. There was no it's place like that. Uh, when when I was history uh, when I was younger, you know, I used to do uh bad things and I re <laughs> Remember, I would be on Mount Davis, man, just getting fired up on Mount Davis, mm-hmm. raising up the mm-hmm. form, mm-hmm. watching the game. Sick, security guards wouldn't bother us or anything, but but the, so so I like being on Mount Davis back then because I could smoke my cigarettes, I could smoke my blunts, you know, I could just get mm-hmm. swerved up there, <laughs> you know. But mm-hmm. now I'm a church mouse. Now, you know, I did a come 
complete 180 turn. I don't drink beer, no caffeine, mm-hmm. no smoke, nothing. But mm-hmm. back then, man, mm-hmm. it was it was fun and the um, tailgating too, man. Like you 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 walk in the parking lot, the fellow Raider fans there, they'd be like, "Hey, man, you hungry? Here's hot dog. Yes. Here's a, some some hey. uh, hamburgers. Hey, want a beer? Here's here's a beer." Um, it, it it was just like family there, you know. Um, yeah. And that was yeah. one thing that I I could always tell my my son now, like like hey, like there was no experience like being at a game at Oakland. You know, I've 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 been to Raider games, A's games, but there's something about the Raider games, man. There's just something mm-hmm. something, something very special about it, man. Yeah, man. You know, Raider fans are just special. And then and then one Oakland. one of my most favorite parts too is that when you're walking to your seats down the hallways, you just hear all the fans going Raiders. <laughs> you know, everybody, everybody just yelling that chant, man. And then you know, just get your blood going, man. You're like, I am yeah, happy to, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm happy to be a part of this. You know, yeah. On the way to the game, like on the bar or whatever, like people were just chanting, yelling it at each other. Yeah, it's man. Awesome. In, the, yeah. in the parking lot. Uh, I'm a Ray, mm-hmm. I'm a Ray, and just slapping that man. <laughs> Loonies, you know what I mean? I'm like, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good, so. good times, man. Good times. Yeah, good stuff for sure, for sure. So yeah, I think the team atmosphere is way up. Um, you know, leadership seems to be on point. You know, the Definitely. team seems to be ready. Um, I think we had a good week, right? Putting things together. Um, and it's going to be some interesting stuff moving forward. Kind of, um, what are your kind of thoughts as we go into the next week about about the team, about uh, things you heard around the league? And uh, I'm, you know, I'm honestly want to see more um, more camp footage of Gardner. You know, I I I don't think he's going to keep throwing more ducks. You know, out there, but um, that's the big thing I want to see is his transition coming to us. You know, um, I'm mm-hmm. like focused on just the way that Garner is um, just throwing that ball. Um, and based on from what I've seen from AOC, um, I, 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 I have no problem or anything to worry about pertaining to him. And um, as you just said, with uh, Tom. Tom Brady. Um, I want them to see what's going forward with him and the whole uh, part of him owning a part of our team. Because I heard that there's like another hiccup now that is um, that's going on, and um, I just want that to get done and um, finalized there. Um, I I bet you that if Tom Brady was trying to be part owner of a different team, like let's say the Patriots or the Dolphins or something like that, he would have that done by now. But just because it's us, you know, they're um, going through every rule in the rule book, trying to find something to be like, well, Tom, uh, you can't do this because Mark did that, you know, or something, you know. So um, that's something that I'm waiting forward to. And um, But basically the most thing that I'm uh, – interested in is seeing more of our guys at camp and i want to see gardner okay yeah yeah um <clears throat> yeah i'm interested in seeing uh some of our undrafted free agents uh, and how they perform um you know i'm really invested in this class i think there's an exceptional amount of depth and ability um here and so i think mm-hmm. it's actually be pretty crucial to see who makes the team? Uh, who might be on the practice squad? Uh, practice squad protected. Um, you know, there's guys like Amari Gaynor and you know, oh yeah, uh, Ram- I'm, yeah Ramel Keaton and you know Andrew Coker and you know uh, Noah Shannon. And, you know, yeah. we, I can keep going. You know, so there's there's some Shepherd, serious uh, corner. Yeah, Jaquan yeah, Shepard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Rashad Williams. You know, there's just like continuously yeah. uh, guys who who are players. So it's going to be interesting kind of to see how that shakes out um, as we move forward, you know, bottom of the roster stuff, um, mm-hmm. you know, Noah Shannon and you know, guys like Nesta Jade Silvera, right? Like what, what happened yeah. to him? Um, does he take another step forward? Um, some of our deaf players like Ellerson Smith, um, uh, uh, the pass rusher. 
Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know if you guys know about Ellerson Smith, but he's like a 6'7", 270-pound pass rusher with like a 4'6", yeah, 40. Yeah, that, that height right, right, right there, man. Um, there's not – I mean, that is tremendously tall, you know, and um, when I think of a person with that height, um, I think of the dude who was on Baltimore, uh, Nagata, or uh, that, that, uh, that, that tall, tall dude. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, yeah. So I'm hoping, you know, he could be like that, you know. Listen, you know, um, we got him. There's also uh, Charlie Smith, which is a similarly sized player but that can actually play linebacker, can drop in coverage pretty well, um, and rush the passer. So it's, it's interesting. Mm -hmm. Those guys, and then Mark Gaynor, um, who's had a little bit of pass rush experience but also can drop back and, and plays well versus the run. Um, they're all physically imposing guys um, who aren't getting a ton of of uh, press right now. But I mean, if one of them pops or some of them, you know, even in a rotational role, um, can do some things. I think this this. I mean, obviously the D line is already scary, man. You know. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. You got those I, guys I, in. I, I wait, man. I, I'm just. I'm just. I feel like a kid waiting for the. Uh, deep park to like open, you know what I mean? And I'm like, come exactly. on, man. I'm so excited, you know, I'm just fired exactly. up, man. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah, I think, um, I think it's going to be exciting to see what comes from this. So, um, if you guys haven't already uh, gone over to, to join up and subscribe for Western, make sure you get that done, you know, um, subscribe so you can catch all the cool stuff that he's coming up with, you know, breaking things down. You know, telling us about the news as soon as it happens um, and that sort of stuff. So, um, yeah, thank you. Really, yeah, it's, you know, and uh, hey, guys, you know, it's uh, free and worst comes to worst. Guess what? You know, like it, you could always unsub. You know, I, I don't think you guys will, <laughs> you know what I mean? But hey, you know, like I understand that there's content out there that isn't made for um, each person. Um, and I know that there's some people in the Raider nation you know they they favor some other content creators than others you know and i get it you know what i mean so there's no harm or no hate or no foul play you know i just ask mm -hmm. that you just give me a chance you know and um if you don't mm -hmm. like it hey man you know if you un, un uh, sub i'll shake your hand <laughs> you know thank you <laughs> <laughs> yeah you know give peace a chance man just you know go on over subscribe and if you haven't subscribed to my channel yet and, and you're here yeah. this late yeah, you like it. Just, just come on, just subscribe. Yeah. Like, you yeah, know, don't miss guys, it. That kind he of does thing, great you know breakdowns, I mean? stats, numbers. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 it's fire, yeah. man. And at some point, you know, um, yeah, and I just have more coming. Know, yeah, see, and and then uh, guys, guys too. You know, um, I've been so busy lately, but now I don't have to work no more overtime on Saturdays anymore. I've, I've, I've been working uh, each Saturday for about the past. Uh, three and a half months now, but um, now I'm kind of getting off that, you know what I mean? So I have yeah, more yeah. time to make more content and be with my boy here, Ha and Raider D. So it's definitely mm -hmm. something that I am looking forward to for sure. Yeah, 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 that's awesome. Yeah, me and you're gonna hook up, we're gonna make sure we get a lot, a lot of lives during the week now that you're gonna be available. My boy is free during the summers, it's on, guys. It's on, yeah. So, yeah, join up. There's more coming. Player interviews. You know, we already have Bruce Wilkerson. We'll have more, believe me. All right. Um, we got more coming next week. So, you know, um, stay with us. Join up. And, you know, I'm going to let everybody go. So I think we had a great yep. uh, a great Sunday here and a good wrap up. And so y'all have a great week. And Yeah, guys. I hope you guys have a great holiday. And I, I just have to say yeah. for I uh, – Bow out here to all the guys watching. Keep it cool. Keep it light. Keep it fresh. Keep it cordial. And enjoy your guys' mm -hmm. holiday and the rest of your week, man. Yeah, yeah. He says keep it cool. I say stay hot, right? <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go, man. <laughs> salute to everybody. I'll see y'all later. Salute. Salute, right? All right. Peace out, nation.